Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength. That I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Father, we thank you for the efficacy of your word of which it is impossible for you to lie. Speak to us tonight. Change our lives. Establish us tonight. I thank you for the anointing of marriage. I thank you for what is about to happen tonight. I thank you because of the things you're going to establish uh, most suddenly tonight. We must decrease and you must increase. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Genesis 2.24. I want us to read from 24 to 25 because many of you know that scripture very well now if you're a man in the house I want you to act like I'm speaking to a wife act like your wife tonight <laughs> somebody say amen uh, I want you to let's go mm-hmm The man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Read it again from 24. Mm-hmm. 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 Praise God. The Bible says, therefore, shall a man leave his what? Father and his what? mother and cleave unto his wife and the bible says and they shall be one flesh praise god and the next verse says and they were both naked the man and his wife and they were not ashamed let me first give you a few facts i was reading something very interesting about the issue of marriage praise god and i was surprised amazed I try to research about something the Lord has been speaking to me for many years but I did not have the articulation you know sometimes we have things in our spirits but we don't know how to say them I don't know if I'm making sense so here's a situation where there is something beating in my heart about something regarding marriage and there are agitations in my spirit about certain things. I don't have words for them, but I feel the reality of those things. I don't know if I'm making sense. So it's out of that that I started to, you know, seek the mind of God and majorly for the words to say and explain what I feel in my heart from an apostolic perspective. You understand? Again, you'll ask yourself, this guy's not married, why is he speaking to married people? Paul wasn't married. Jesus wasn't. So it doesn't mean that, and there are also people who have been married for 50 years and they fail, so save me, praise God, save me. Marriage is a revelation, not experience. I repeat, marriage is a revelation, not experience. Look at Christ and the church. Is it just an experience? No, it's a revelation. From a revelation, the experience comes. If your experience is not based on the revelation, it's only a matter of time. It will show for what it is. Cano. Praise God. Praise God. That's why many people marry for the wrong reasons. Because they don't understand divine purpose. Praise the Lord Jesus. But revelation precedes experience. Every experience is a confirmation of revelation affirmed. Firstly, you must have the revelation of marriage before you get married. Praise God. Revelation precedes everything. It's like Jesus. You must know Jesus by revelation. Praise the Lord. 
and then you walk in the experiences of the spirit at least you walk in another spirit and think that you're walking with jesus hallelujah here's some divorce facts that shocked me not that you're going to get divorced or that i plan to see you divorced but i want to open your eyes to something in the united states of america every 36 seconds divorce takes place every 36 seconds divorce does what takes place and that is 2400 divorces a day 16,800 divorces a week 876,000 divorces a year do you understand what i'm saying marriage does not happen every 36 seconds that means that there are more people divorcing in the world than the people who are getting married there are more people right now having issues in marriage than the people who are happy there are more single mothers right now raising children every second more than mothers who are raising children in a natural setting of marriage there are many dysfunctional families every second than families that are fully functioning every second of the day in 36 seconds every 36 seconds right now from the time i got on this pulpit how many weddings have broken you understand what i'm saying and how long did they take to plan these weddings they dated for one year dated for two years dated for three years dated for four years dated for five years then uh, they thought it through then parents interjected then they tried to talk again and then they prayed and then they went kwanjula how much did they spend to get married hundreds of millions if you come to uganda we no longer even have weddings we have events do I have a witness in the house? Today it's not marriage, it is what? It is a show. It is a show. Do you know how many people are not married right now because they are still waiting for money? I'm believing God. Apostle, when the money appears, I will what? Okay. Praise the Lord Jesus. Look at your father Abraham. How much did he need to get married? Look at your mother Sarah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, Adam, from where you came from, how much did he spend? That tells you God's idea. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. A wonderful friend of mine and a man in the ministry, a son in the ministry submitted one time, came to me and told me, I found a wife. And I want to marry her immediately. I asked him, when do you want to marry her? He told me the date. I asked him, do you have money? He told me, yeah, I have money, but it is tied up, so I might need to push it a few months. I asked him, hey, okay. So what do you think? Do you want us to push the marriage for the money? Because he's a rich fellow. He's not a poor guy. Very rich. Very rich. Very rich. But some of his money was supposed, I think, to come out in a given period, which was a bit extending from the time he was looking at the marriage. So I asked him, how much is available now? He told me the amount. We agreed that it was enough. I told him, how many people can feed on that amount? He told me 40 people. We did the wedding. <laughs> oh, 40 people. Write your reports. Quarrel for not being invited. Complain that they didn't give you a card or didn't give you an opportunity to contribute. Hang on a tomato tree. Dry. Rise up, but they are married, baby. They are married. I thought women would be screaming because I've just delivered some people. And then you ask them, oh, but seriously, what's your opinion? People's opinions. What will people think? Why? Because you want to come jumping and then dancing and everyone says, wow, look at them how happy they are. Look at her shoe. I tell women. Women! I was on a some wedding where the programmer told people time is out. The woman said, I've not finished my clothes. <laughs> I bought how many clothes? Over six. Over shut down, over three. Then they said, now we have to, no, 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 I have to finish my clothes. <laughs> Went back, changed, came kicking. <laughs> Went back, changed again, came kicking. <laughs> she had to finish all her clothes. God deliver us from evil. Am I making sense? But saying as much as we are laughing, it is a very deplorable 
thing to think that every 36 seconds in America, families are split. Some children will never see their fathers again. Some children will never see their mothers again. Some children will never have an opportunity to enjoy a family as it's supposed to be. Every 36 seconds. This is more spiritual than realistic. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a huge attack, a huge attack on the institution of marriage. Huge, huge, the huge attack. Now, if those are 876, if you calculate that in 10 years, how many millions of people are divorced? And that is what we know. These others, they were living together without having what? Consecrated their what? Vows. And they also what? Do you understand what I'm saying? It is because, and I'm going to answer this before I enter the equipped wife. It is because we have substituted the doctrinal and biblical teaching of marriage with the ideas and opinions of the world. If you enter the mind of many women and men right now and you search their brains, their definition and revelation of marriage is not according to the scripture. It is according to the world. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many things that are even discussed on our altar are after the spirit of this world, not the spirit which is of Christ. I have been to meetings where I've had people speak about oh, marriage, what, women, 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 what. But then you hear, and then when you start to listen, it's not God. It sounds like God, but it's not God. It's not God. Because they're in touch real issues. The last conference we had of women, a woman had come with poison in her bag. And she was going to poison her husband that day. Bury him and look after her children. It was after that time when I was sharing about something, about Vashti, you know the indifference on the spirit of Vashti, the woman who Esther substituted, that she kept back her poison. And after service she confessed to one of the ministers that I was going to poison the fellow today. In fact, somebody just called me and I said, ah, let me just go and see whether... I can find a place where God can understand me before he poison the chief fellow. I don't know that that man one day will buy me chicken. But he owes me. I'm joking. But this is serious. Somebody carried poison in a bag. And they were going to poison a fellow. And they were going to kill him. Now you say, ah, how can she do that? No, maybe she has gone through too much. You know, sometimes we judge people, but we also don't understand what they go through. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's funny to imagine. Because you see, it's like when you're dealing with marriage. I have had an opportunity to talk with couples as a pastor from my perspective. The things that separate people are between themselves. As a third party, you will never know. Because there are things that are hidden even when two people are talking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even when they all put things on the table, there are things they never put on the table. And those particular things that are not on the table, they are the real things that break marriage. Oh, he abuses me. Oh, no, that is not the real issue. There is another issue inside the real issue. And those are the things they don't put in front of men of God. Unless God shows you and he wires you in the spirit. And then you say, yeah, okay, the Lord has showed me. But if the Lord hasn't showed thee, you're in trouble as a man of God because you think you're counseling people. But then you realize they're worsening because some of these things that we're talking about and dealing with in the body of Christ, they were not intricately addressed. People were not taught biblically. Biblically. I'll give you an example. Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse is not quarreling. Yo, you're stupid. No. That is one level. You can abuse each other and we understand. Eh? But imagine someone, people were married, eh? and then somebody became vulnerable. You know when people fall in love, there's a way all the guards are let down. You understand? And now we are telling the people, don't let down your guards, even when you're married. Because if you let them down, you're what? 
you're in trouble because if you let them down and somebody takes advantage of the guards you've let down, eh? you're in trouble. So again, now we're also teaching people, don't let down your what? Guards. Um, Tomo ya visa yena, bobo ina kaiyumba ko, neka savings accounti ko, ba ko neka savings account, neba ko kewele kere zayo, ngo mo kazi katiba kuti, kuruusi. I'm sorry. In Africa, this is how women think. Don't tell your husband everything. Huh? You can build what, but have a savings account. He doesn't know. Then even men are also told, don't tell your wife what. Otherwise, she will start calculating you. If you have many accounts, tell her the two, three. But there is one account which you shouldn't what? Mama, 99.9% .9 of those marriages are not happy. And 90 almost percent of them, if it's not the grace of God, they end up sinking. Why? Because you have positioned yourself in a place where you're expecting disaster. You are a minister of disaster preparedness. <laughs> and you know what the Bible says? As a man what? So is he. If you think your husband is going to cheat on you, let me tell you, me, I have, I have, and now I'm speaking as a man, eh? there are many men, many men whose husbands suspected they were cheating before they started cheating. And after they started suspecting, the men cheated. Even women, you who are here, you know what I'm talking about if you've ever cheated on your husband, I swear. You know what I'm talking about. That you, say, you see, these are the things we never say. But they are serious. When he trusted you, you were okay. The day he stopped trusting you, he started looking at other men. Because he stopped trusting you. So which came first? The trust. Trust is not based on evidence. In marriage, uh -uh, in other things you can't, business. But when it comes to marriage, trust is not based on what? Evidence. No. Trust is spiritual warfare. Somebody has understood me. Trust is spiritual what? Oh, Apostle, I'm married to this guy, but I have trust issues. I swear you're landing in trouble soon. Listen, trust is a choice. It is not based on what they have said and what they haven't said. Trust is a what? You choose, and you say, me, I've chosen to what? Whether he's funny or not, mm-hmm. That is why the beginning of husband and wife is they are both naked and they are unashamed. That's why it begins. If you realize in the Bible, the first time wife is mentioned is when they become naked and unashamed. You understand what I'm saying? Before that, it was woman. Adam met a what? A woman. He called her woman because she came out of what? Of him. That's what he calls him. Right? She was taken out of man. Now people, when they look at this story, they don't actually realize that even in Genesis, there was a time Eve was just a woman. Because they think it's obvious that the fact that he saw Eve, that was his wife. No. If he had seen a wife in her, he would have said wife. He called her woman. His first revelation of Eve was woman, not wife. When he first saw Eve, you understand what I'm saying? She was what? A woman. She wasn't a wife. If you study Genesis, you realize there is a place where Eve translates into wife. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a place where Eve translates into what? Wife. And they were both what? Naked. And this time he says, the man, not and this woman. This time he says, the man and his wife. That's the first time we see Eve addressed as a wife. And that's the end of Genesis 2. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, like I always say, there's a difference between woman and wife. So when we are talking of equipped wife, we are not talking of equipped women. We are talking of equipped what? And that's exactly what I'm going to address. So I'll give you an example of verbal abuse. Someone lets the guards down. Becomes what? Vulnerable. Then they start telling the person their secrets. You know, before we met... I had John, I had Joseph, I had Kabila, I had, I had, am I making some sense? So, they let down guards, 
And if you realize when people are just good and married, they surprise each other. <laughs> Small things. Hey, I used to smoke, mom. I was a chimney, you. You hold you. You used to smoke? Yeah, I used to smoke. Then the guy not smoked before. Noted. Hmm, okay. Yeah. The goal of a nakbang I used to fight. Here are your phone when I'm safe. But before that I was a fighter. <gasps> you used to fight. <gasps> now, I, now the Holy Spirit. It's all over. Not a fighter. Right? Then one day they get a misunderstanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? One day they get a what? A misunderstanding. Do you know what he tells her? You're a prostitute. Why have you called her a prostitute? Because she mentioned John before. I don't know if I'm making sense. She mentioned what? John and Kabila. And then you said, mm, this whole list, mm, this guy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what made her a prostitute? Because she was vulnerable. So that's why some people say, let me not be vulnerable. Let me lock my story up. Before you met me, yeah, I'd only met one man, Jesus Christ, son of Mary and Joseph. Is that the truth? Was it the truth? It wasn't the truth. But she had to put up the guards to keep herself from one time being called a what? Now, question, has this marriage begun in truth or lies? But when we get to a level where we have to lie to guard ourselves from being hurt, where do you think we're going? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I tell couples, when somebody lays down their guard, get to know the difference from when the guard is up. And when they lay down their guard, do things that will make them feel like they are free to lay down any guard. I don't know if I'm talking to equipped women, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, let me give you an example now as this is a secret. We men, we don't talk like you. Your strength is talking. With women, it's words. They understand words. Do you understand what I'm saying? A woman's revelation of love is words. That's a woman's revelation. Like a man's revelation of love is submission. Men, tell them. You can't tell me, oh, I love you so much, but you won't touch me. No, ah, 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 ah. There, eh? You don't define, ah, Pastor Sam, help me. You're quiet. <laughs> Am I making sense? Before you tell me you love me, I have to see that you are submitted. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. As unto the, because God knew. That is how he understands what. He doesn't understand love a certain way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen, and that's the truth. Now, let us leave the way the world teaches you. Eh? You women emancipation. All my female gender teachers were not married. I know why. You know I did gender. I know why they were not married. Because when I heard them talking, one of my gender teachers said, yeah, even me, I have to be at home. If a man has to be, has to breastfeed a child at home. I, if, that's me. I just wanted to ask her, why do you have breasts? Why am I flat here? Why am I flat? You tell me why am I flat? Why didn't God... Now... Tell your neighbor back to the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, I can stay home and watch the kid. But it's not my primary calling. And I have to be honest. You women know how your kids are. He said, hey, I think this kid is not well. For us, you just touch the kid and you're like, What's that? <laughs> the kid is not hot. What do you mean by the kid is not okay? Because you know your child. You know your child. You know your child. It doesn't mean that I can't stay at home if situations don't demand to. But I can never do it as good as you. Take your place, woman. That's the truth. I can never do it as good as you. That is why a foolish child shames the mother, not me. Because God knew he gave you that anointing. It's on you. It's on you. I was dealing with a couple a couple of weeks ago, and they were bringing issues on the table, and I told him, see, the problem with the two of you is you're trying to help each other, to change each other. God didn't call you to change your husband. God didn't call you to change your wife. He didn't. 
You try changing them, you'll see how worse they become. We don't change wives. We don't change husbands. No, we do our part. What did God tell me to do? Love her even I have loved the Christ. Me, let me love you. You be funny, but me, let me what? As your husband, if he's funny, let him be funny. You submit. Whether he's funny, me, how can you submit to a man? Mama, who is doing? Oh, 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 oh. That means that your submission is conditioned to his character, not God. You don't submit because he's a good man. You submit because God told you to submit. You don't love your wife because she's not quarrelsome. No. You love her because God told you to love her, even in her quarrelsome state. I don't know who I'm talking to. Okay, this is why you're going to America. Now, this is what... They seem like they're obvious things, but they are. So, even the God-given role for you is subject to how he is. You're a good wife as long as he's doing everything right. The day he walks out of line, you also what? Compromise and say, if he's doing this, huh? even me, let me what? You know those local songs? Tiwa kukona, nawe mukone. Ah, they even know the songs. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Marriage is about losing battles and winning wars. If you're not ready, don't enter. Linda Ko. Honey, I have a temper. Honey, I know myself. Wait until the temper cools down. Then get married. Because I don't know any one couple where he has not woken up and cut a wire. I don't know anyone. But it's the thing that makes you husband. And reminds you love her even as Christ has loved the church. Because even you, God could have cut a wire on you. You understand what I'm saying? Did you get where I'm coming from? So instead of us playing our what? Personal roles that God has ordained us. We want to hold people ransom and accountable for doing their part. Or in the sense where we want to live in their what? In their zones. You understand what I'm saying? Equipped wife, eh? if your husband is funny, you do your part. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do it so well that when you're done, you'll say, me, I did my part. It's a thing even about husband. You do your part. Okay, she's funny. You do your part. Don't change her. You change yourself. This is the man in the mirror. Not, let me tell you. Me, I see people. Me, me I, sometimes I hear people saying, you know, that person changed me. No, they didn't change you. God changed you. They just did their part so well. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here is the issue of the gods. Eh? Verbal. Somebody keeps something in their heart. They open gods up, start to say things. And some say, okay, they're not. Then the day they misunderstand each other, somebody brings out something. Eh? And some words, it doesn't matter how forgiveness comes, some words are too tough that things might never be the same again. Me, I've seen it. I have seen it firsthand as a man of God. I meet people, I have had things. A man tells you I forgive her, but things will never be the same. Why? Because every time I look at myself, I've been weighed, she has put me in my place. I will not say some of those things, but some of you I know you're too smart to understand what I'm saying. Some words can never be reversed. More so when it comes to those private things that you know the two of you shared. Because now from that day, I'm going to be naked before you, but I'll be ashamed. Because I have things to protect on me. You kill that part that was free to walk with mighty stomach and not worry what you're thinking, whether my hip was a bit smaller. You, you get where I'm coming from. These things are serious. These things are serious. 90% of what makes relationships is here. Mess with here, everything is messed up. The body is messed up, the soul is messed up, the spirit is messed up here. You know that. You know that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's worse with women because they're emotional beings. For them everything has to begin. You have, that's why I told you, like for us submission, for you it is words. Yeah, yeah I can't believe it. You know it's the truth. 
the only difference is, I shared with somebody a few days ago, I told them that the only difference is that as you continue to grow, you know the difference between who is lying and who isn't. That's the only difference. But no woman doesn't want to be what? You remember Ephesians 5? Huh? Open Ephesians 5. <laughs> Quick twice. Ephesians 5. Let me show it to you. Message version. I'm going to show you something. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 5, 25. I'll probably begin from 22. Give me the message. 22. Wives, not women. Eh? Wives, understand and what? Are you seeing how God works? Eh? Firstly, you have to what? Understand him. Then what? Then support him. If you don't understand him, you can't support him. And if you don't understand and support him, he can't understand you as one who loves him. He says, in ways that show your support for Christ. And the next verse says, the husband provides leadership to his wife, the way Christ does to the church, not by domineering, but by what? Cherishing. And the Bible says, so just as the church submits, the church, who is the church? Wife, not woman, submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership. Wives should likewise submit to their husbands. That's how we know you love us. And so settle it in your head. Settle it in your head. Me, I've seen women whose men leave them and go to other women. You look at all of those women and check the way they deal with their husbands. Your food is on the table. Not that it's right for him to do it. You understand what I'm saying? But some of you open the door for what? For the devil. Your food is on the table. The tea also. Then you go to sleep. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Then at the moment the guy goes out his food, he knows, ah, no, this is, this is, she's my wife, we've been married for what? For many years, I can what? Yeah, he fixes his food, eats, he loves her. Then tomorrow, the superstar goes to work. <laughs> Another woman comes. Sebo. 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 Do men understand what I'm saying? Men, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? You're a slave in your own household and you're a king at work. Sebo, is there anything I can get you? Can I warm it? How warm do you want it? Hot? Okay. Can I add avocado? Okay. Do you want tea? How do you want it? White or black? Cream or not? Needle or fresh milk? Okay. Evening. Your food is on the table. Even when we are worshipping the Jesus we submit to, we don't worship him a certain way. We humble ourselves. Broken and contrite spirit. You don't tell God, you are doing something new every day of my life. You are touching me afresh. Oh. You're laughing, but I'm saying very serious things. I'm trying to open up your eyes to see why every 36 seconds people are divorcing. It's the truth. It's the truth. You look at all our mothers who have cooked for many years. They have to be taught. They have to be taught. My father finds something in a cup of tea. What is this in the tea? My mom comes running. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me go and change it. Just pour it and pour it for another cup. It's very simple. Just get in the pack or put more milk and then we turn it for it. Yourself. I mean, after that, you can do it. It's very easy. So, what's the big deal? Must I honestly, the whole day I've been cooking, must I honestly, honestly, Regan, honestly, Regan, must I, on a cup, honestly, do you know the things I go through? I was cooking the whole day. I was, this woman does nothing at home. I do. Your show.com, your microwave. Your digital. Yet marriage is still analog. 
I don't know who I'm talking to. Tell your neighbor, marriage is still an law. Some of you have migrated. Already. Everything in your life, everything in your marriage is digito. You understand what I'm saying? Food. Do we take long to cook food? It's minutes. It's hours. How about fumba matoke mubi mani? No more is the toke neri korachi. Neri gonda. You understand? But you're dealing with a digito what? Generation. Somebody just gets food and throws it in the microwave. Pua! Three minutes. Pui! 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 She, she. She's building a marriage in digital format, which is supposed to be analog. She doesn't know the real test of matoki cooked under the right temperature for many hours. Because I'm using <laughs> figures of speech. Do you understand what I'm saying? So both of them say we are eating matoke, but one woman is eating a different form of matoke. Me marriage, ah, marriage is hard. Ah, some say, ah, me mine is okay. Mine is okay. And that's why I told God, I thank God for Fanero couples. This is not pride that if it's true. When I look at how Mugaga is with his wife, they are together on basketball, they are together in overnight, I'm like, this is it, this is it. You understand what I'm saying? Let's see Pastor Sam with his wife. Muchala Kenya, her husband is like the bag, she cut everywhere, best friend. I say, yeah, this is marriage. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud when I see that. I'm proud when I see that. The list is endless. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Because that's what he told us. Men are supposed to cling. That's the truth. It's Genesis. He says, I'll cleave to his wife. Do you know what it means? He shall get attached, get joined unto his wife. Not join with, no. He shall cleave unto his wife. He shall cleave unto his wife. Unto. Cleave unto her. In. Be around her, protect her. This is my wife. You understand what he's saying? How are you? Press the man with a hard hand. How are you doing? As in, don't even joke. Don't even think about it. <laughs> but today, many women attend service and their husbands. They're not anywhere. We have to pray for the church. They are married, but he's not cleaved. Praise God. What were they talking about, Pussy? <laughs> yes. He says, go up before I was talking about the submission to their husbands. That's how he knows that you love him. The next verse says, um, so as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, why should you likewise submit to the husbands? Next verse. And he says, husbands, listen, this is a command. Go all out in your love for your wives, right? Exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving and not what? Getting. You understand what I'm saying? And the next verse says that Christ's love, listen, makes the church whole. So what makes you whole? His love for you. And he continues to explain what the love is. He says, his words evoke her beauty. Every woman is evoked when you speak certain words. Me, I was raised with sisters. I'm not their husband. But she enters like this and says, Hey, haven't you seen my hair? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? She's your sister. But she has a problem that you have not told her what? Hey, nice hair. And that's how now so I realize also men, we can also be dense. She changes hair and you think it's like brushing teeth. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. You're supposed to change it, okay? In my hair. No. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then... He doesn't comment on your hair. Then a stupid Simon comes from nowhere. Wow! Nice hair. Don't you see even the adverts of hair on television? She's walking and she's doing like this. And she's all splashing her hair. Wow! Wow! And then men are like... Then a man falls in, in a lake or in someone fell in a swimming pool. Another one put a fork in juice. Because the woman did what? her hair. Then she gets back home. Then she even strokes. Hi, how are you? As in, see, I made hair. Come on, see it. Yeah, yeah. And the dude just continues on blabbing. You know the economy? The economy. Eh, eh. The, women, am I making sense? 
His words evoke your what? Your beauty. He's supposed to be speaking and speaking and speaking. Even when you're this, he says, wow, model! Model! <laughs> it connects with Adam because the first time he sees her, he says, bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Says, okay, I, I have to be yours. <laughs> that's how women understand. And that's the truth. You can't just have a marriage and for you, just... Yeah, I don't say many things, but... Mama. That's why our girls are marrying Jarudez. You know Jarudez? Those who, funny boys, they don't have a future. They're not connected to God. They are very disorganized, but they have words. Ay, 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 ay. The guy's mouth is like a tape. Ay, ay, ay. He can talk and then you say, ay, 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 ay. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. Before you know that, she can't even see where she's going. Because there are even women who can't discern truth from what? From life. Some of you, they lie to you every time. Even they'll lie to you tomorrow and you'll believe. You're too gullible. A guy just says something, up. They pick her up. Get up, Cynthia. No, no, it's too bad. It's too bad. Praise God. That's why we sharpen discernment. Such that you know who is supposed to tell you those words. The funny guy starts telling you, tell him, ha ha, brother. <laughs> that one mm, has refused. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm hot, but... Yeah, you're right, I'm cute, yeah, but... Mm, mm, that's not it. There are women I know, because I'm a pastor, I've seen these things. Anybody can lie to her and she goes, anybody. Why? Because you're too desperate. Oh, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. The more older you become, you say, yeah, 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 now I even have children. Oh, my God. This even makes it worse. It reduces the what? The chances by a certain percentage. Now, eh? anybody, God, any, you understand me? That's why I tell women. Eh? Let me tell you the funny thing about men. Eh? Men marry value. Every woman in the spirit realm represents a price. And I have to tell you that. Every woman in the spirit realm represents a... That's the difference between woman and wife. Wife has a higher price in the spirit than woman. You understand what I'm saying? When he speaks of a virtuous woman, he speaks of a married woman, by the way. Not just a, Because later you realize her husband, her husband. That means you're talking about a what? Yeah. He says for a virtuous woman who shall what? Fine, for her price is what? Far above rubies. Every woman in the spirit realm represents a price. And every man in the spirit realm represents a vision. Because that's the issue of the head. The head represents a what? A vision. Every man. You look at every woman. Many women who make decisions say, let me follow this person. Many of them have to take time to say, is this guy going somewhere? When I look at him, does he have a future? You understand what I'm saying? Some of you, your future is money. You say, does he have money? Money is future. Money equal future. Money future. Then you say, ah, I would rather cry in a Benz than on a bicycle. It might be difficult, I know. You understand what I'm saying? But tears in a Benz are different from tears on a what? Yeah. Oh, on my way back over here. <laughs> then you stop a taxi. <laughs> no. Alice said, no. Let me cry in a Benz, but what? That's also her price. That's her what? Her price. Men represent vision, women represent a price of something. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know women who have had four children, seven. I mean, they're the ones men want. Not these single hot things. Oh, the president of France. He has a price. Price! Hey, hey, hey! Price! Don't be desperate. Just understand how to draw your what? Your price, your value. Increase it every day as a woman. Even if you're 70, you'll get married. Me, I was in Bukoma and Simbi one time. I witnessed a woman who had lost four husbands. Now all of them are dying. All of them are what? 
dying. She is 60 and she's marrying the fourth husband. The last husband died about six months ago. Argue. Bukoma and Simbiao. Chala vomita Regina. Mwanyina wakasa galores. 60. Now the guy dies, another one comes. The dies, another one comes. Dies, another one comes. Somebody, ah, that woman, woman die. Yes, but she has a what? A price. She has a price. One time I was counseling a couple. The woman was HIV positive. The man was HIV negative. And I asked all the guy, is it even biblical that you're marrying this woman? He said, apostle, you don't understand. Up to today, I've never understood. <laughs> he left cute, hot, HIV negative women. Even me up to now, I don't what? Understand. But for him, he saw bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. I was so shocked. My heart was like, oh God, this is faith. Oh yeah, yeah. This is, you know, for us to make a man walk, but this one. This is faith. He married her. They've been living together. They have two children. He's still negative. I got shocked. I don't know. Even me, I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> Tell your fellow woman, value, price. He says, for her price is far above rupees. How much do you cost? A text message only. I saw you with nice shoes. Woo! <laughs> Women, shoes, nice shoes, that's it. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're a single mother, you think you become desperate. Because, you know, conferences, we're always addressing wives, we're always addressing singles, but we don't address single mothers. Listen, your value didn't drop because you have children. Uh -uh. No. No, it's you who doesn't understand it. It's you who doesn't what? Get it. Me, I know people. People, men who have found women with seven children. Other, I don't care. You'll produce me one and we close. I want you. That's a funny delusion. Oh, men are too few. We are many. Then you say, ah, ah, I think let me compromise. That's your price. That's your price. You've chosen to be that cheap. They can get you off the stall anyway because you're desperate. The more you grow, the more you become desperate. Age is not the issue. Price. Price. You find 20-year-old girls more pricey than 36-year-old women. Price. You find 25-year-old girls who know who they are. And you find a 32-year-old girl who doesn't know who she is. Price. You're that desperate. That your cost will attract the kind of men. That's why many women who are not married, it's not because guys don't talk to them. They're wrong kind. Come. Because that's your price. I'm sorry. You find that you find a guy who is fine. Me, I want you. That's your price. Because in the spirit realm, that's what you could attract. So you're not single because they've not said something. No. You're single because you are attracting your price. The same applies to men. You attract your vision. You attract your vision. You attract your vision. Why is she reading it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get where I'm coming from? It is the price. It is the price. And I wish women will understand that men see that price. Peter explained it. He says, likewise, you wives, if you have men which believe not, there's that communication. Let them be won over by the communication. Without what? Without words. Some of you think that you have to talk to make your point. You have to be quarreling every time to make your what? Your point. He says, likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Mama, again, underline. That if any obey not the word, they may also, without the word, be one by the conversation. Imagine, conversation, without the word. That means you have conversations without words. You speak without words. 
Because women know how to speak with what? You gossip, you what? Every time I'm like, I don't believe when you speak now. Like, what? Yeah. Men are not like that. We can talk about so and what, but we don't talk about sensitive issues like the way some women are. Men. That's why if you find a man who talks like a woman, flee. Do you understand what I'm saying? Flee. 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 It's those conversations. That's why some people fail to get through in marriage. Because she thinks by quarreling a lot, he will understand. He can't understand by speaking too much. There's a point where men switch off, by the way, women. There's a point where you start speaking and it just switches off. Ta. Then you speak. Then you speak. Nanga for him, he has not switched on. Then you even cry and throw tantrum. Because you see, the way God has wired men, eh? We are not just reconcilers, we are resoluters. We think resolution, we don't think reconciliation, we think resolution. Okay, everything has happened, what's the point? I wish you stayed the point here. But then she said, when you first go back, in 1992, you remember? Then we have to go back. Men! Do you understand what I'm saying? For him, he wants, okay, everything has been said. What's your point? Are you parking or you're leaving? Are you not leaving? Can I plead? Is there a forgiveness or not? There's no forgiveness. Okay, what's plan B? And that's the truth. Because the man is not wired. Eh? You're sentimental beings. Men are not sentimental. They are ego. Men are egoistic. You understand? He has to feel as king before he can exercise lordship. He, he can't think. You understand what I'm saying? You can't beat through his rigozoning faculty. Before you make him feel like you're speaking to your king. You see how Esther dealt with the man. You see how Esther. Esther, your mother. I'm going through an Esther's first. Some women. I don't even understand whether you even know what that means. I'm doing an Esther's first. What do you mean by Esther's first? What, first and firstly, what was actually Esther fasting about? The spirit was redeeming a nation. Not your small issues you have with your boyfriend. And then you say, I'm doing an Esther fast for three days. Kyrie, you do your Esther fast. Please respect the gospel. Respect the gospel. Esther was not fasting because the Kagai has refused to... No, this was a nation issue. Please respect this fast. You say you're going in a three-day fast. But don't call it an Esther fast. Please. Esther was looking at something different from your vision. I hope we are clear on that. Respect the anointing on this woman's life. Praise the Lord Jesus. See how Esther presents herself before the what? The king. You understand what I'm saying? She says, oh my lord, what, what, what? And the guy says, okay, now I'm king of kings, lord of lords. Ask anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it seem good unto thee, the king. If it, but she langa chiko. She, oh, I love the way Mchalavu Kenya talks. I wish she could go get out in for you. You see, let the king and Haman come to this down to the banquet that I have prepared. If it seems, you hear, if it seems, sir, if you feel it in your spirit, I would like to go to a one overnight. In your heart, if you feel it. I'm going to the overnight. I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I'm so filled by the Holy Ghost. You didn't call me. You're not God. Priority God first. No, no, no. <laughs> Pray! And then the man says, such women are too hard to what? To find. That means the rugged ones are easy to what? The funny ones, they're easy. They're everywhere. You understand? Those ones didn't come. Don't worry. But the funny ones are easy to what? Yes, because even men know who is cheap and who isn't. They just don't tell you. They just don't tell you. But a man can know that this woman is cheap, this one isn't. Praise God. And that's how they differentiate wives from women. This is a woman, but this is a wife. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Don't worry, even men, we have our day. Where we can shh ourselves, you understand? But today is your what? Me, I'm hoping that in everything I'm saying, somebody is speaking something. 36 seconds. 2,400 divorces every day in the United States. 16,800 divorces every week in the United States. 
Every 36 seconds, someone is getting divorced because we have left the Bible. We have built our own definition of marriage. If he talks to me this way, even me, I talk to him that way. Because even me, eh, I am what? Yes. He speaks of your communication without words, that they might be won over. Now, amazingly, women think Paul is talking to women. He's talking to wives here. If you're not a wife, you can't understand what it means to communicate without words. You can't. And that therein lies the price of a wife. She knows how to communicate to her husband without speaking. There are things she will do and this guy will say, mm. No, Rebecca. When Isaac first laid his eyes on Rebecca, the Bible says she veiled herself. She covered her glory. Immediately. She didn't say anything. He knew this was his wife. He did it to first date her for one year. Let me first start the yundare of Oli You understand what I'm saying? It's like chewing bubble gum. <laughs> you understand? And then it's over. What do you do? Yes. Hey, am I saying hard words? Eh? Okay, forgive me. But am I making sense? Any woman who has a price knows how to communicate without what? What? That's how you know that this is a wife, not a woman. She knows the things to communicate without speech. Without speech. When a woman overtalks, worry about everything. When she thinks every answer is speaking, worry. It's like women who think you have to answer everything your husband tells you. You think you have to answer back. They should tell him, when your husband starts quarreling, put a stone in the mouth or water. He will stop. And they used to think that the trick was in the stone that was given. No, the trick was in telling them, shut up! <laughs> Let the king speak. You understand what I'm saying? Let him what? Speak. He can seem smart. But you're keeping quiet. But there is something you can do and make him melt like ice cream. If you know how. Then she spits out the stone. That's why some men in marriage, they look like they are bewitched. Because some women know how to tame men. They know. Remember, God gave you an advantage. He called you helper suitable. Do you know what it means to help? Can you help when you're not on an advantage? Uh -uh, answer me. Can you be a helper when you're not of advantage? By the time you are a helper, you have an advantage over me. You do. But that advantage to get into my spirit, it can only wire itself when you do your part. When you first step, it's like the Holy Spirit. I'm a minister of the Holy Ghost. I'm a demonstrator of the Holy Ghost. You understand what I'm saying? I can stretch my hands right now and somebody gets slain. He probably didn't choose it. The Holy Spirit probably didn't feel it. But because I did it, he honors it. Yet I'm submitted to the Holy Spirit. But it does everything I want. And this is the mystery. The Bible says Christ and the church. We are submitted to Christ. But when I'm speaking on the pulpit, it looks as though I'm the one in charge. Yet he's the helper. Look at the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls him the what? The helper. The comforter. When I'm standing in this room and I'm demonstrating power, you don't see the Holy Spirit. Where is he? Where is he? Tell me, show me the Holy Spirit. Do you see him anywhere? But he's present. And his work is tangible. He gets the cancer out of that bone. But you don't see him physically. You understand what I'm saying? You find a woman and she outspeaks her husband in public. You know me, I talk a lot. My husband is a quiet man. I talk a lot. That's why Paul says women should not speak. He's not saying you shouldn't preach on the altar. He's only saying speak under submission. That's what he's saying. He's not saying that women shouldn't what? No. No, 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 no. He's saying they should not speak without what? Without what? 
a covering, covering your head. Because your hair, the hair you're covering is your glory. The woman's hair is her glory. In other words, submit your glory before you speak. But I've seen couples where women always outshine men, and women want to make it a point to outshine their husbands. Those small things break marriage. They do. If you know your husband has a problem with the in-laws, you understand? He's not a thinking guy. He won't think to buy stuff for the in-laws. Then for you, you go visiting your parents, and then you carry stuff. You say, Mommy, I bought you stuff one day. Your father says, thank you. Next day, Mommy, I bought you stuff. Mm, thank you. When will you in-law? No, you might not say it directly. But they'll say, but this in-law fellow, he doesn't have a brain that we are supposed to take stuff to our in-laws, basic things, because that's how African parents think. Go to a supermarket, buy blue bar, not because they need it, buy sugar, not because they need it, but because you need to honor them. Now, a woman who understands the work of helper will buy this stuff and say, Daddy has told me to deliver. Oh, my son-in-law. <laughs> oh, my son-in-law. That's the what? Helper, you're covering him. Now I say, can you believe everything I bring here? I'm the one who brings. That's the guy. He doesn't have that brain. If you want to see the beginning of the end of your marriage, equipped wife, start speaking your husband's weaknesses to his in-laws. Every time you quarrel, mommy, can you believe? Now, you reconcile, but these two don't reconcile. Yeah. From that day, your mother looks at you, she says, Every time my daughter is in trouble, my daughter, then she goes on her knees, God, deliver my daughter. She's in the hands of a what? A maniac. A dubious spirit that is going to consume her. The two of you have reconciled. You're even in Dar es Salaam eating ice cream. You've left a record here. Cover your what? Your husband. Cover him. Cover him. I met a woman. My husband, they were struggling on a few things. Financially, the guy was not working. So he left her with a car. When he left her with her car, huh? he left. He went and he was supposed to come back. Now, the guy didn't have a coin in his what? In his pocket. He didn't have even a shilling in his what? This happened not far from now. So, me, I tell her, oh, since your husband has gone with someone, let me see my car. You drive that car. Let him find us at office. You understand what I'm saying? The woman told me I can't drive her post, so... You understand what I'm saying? So we talked. I realized that a woman can drive. Later on, I realized the woman can drive. I asked her, why did you lie to me? She told her, I'm sorry to lie to you. But I had to cover my husband. I couldn't tell you he didn't have money. I said, this is a wife. <laughs> men, you should love me. You men, you should love me. But you, you get what I'm saying? She told me she can't drive. Because she had to cover the guy who didn't have money. So I'm the one who has to discover that she can drive, but she didn't want to tell me that the man doesn't have money because she knows what it feels like for her husband not to have a coin. And she can't let out the family secret. That's a wife. That's a price. That is expensive. Now we don't come girls who don't even have wisdom to tell the difference. Do you think they have the wisdom? Ha! Munanga, if I go, he doesn't have money. He has to find me here. Uh, oh, I drive, he'll find his way. I guess some women are like that. Eh? <laughs> then a man observes and says, Eh, I'm in trouble. Praise God. Some realize it before, and some realize it. I'm almost finishing because of time, but I had a lot to say. So, the issue of communication without words. Hallelujah. Take me back to Peter, because I'm almost finishing. That issue of communicating without words, the conversation of the wives. I love the way the last verse says it. It's called the conversations of the wives. It's called the conversations of wives. Not women. Women can't have such conversations. Those conversations are found in equipped wives. wives. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Now, I'm almost finished. The so next verse says, and it says, and while they behold your chest, you're disciplined. They are seeing. They don't hear. Coupled with fear. That is reverence. 
You understand what I'm saying? And the next verse says, Who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning of plating of hair, putting on Tommy Hill and Chanel. You understand? And the putting on for an apparel. Yes, you're smart outside, but that's not what makes you. That's not the price. When I was talking about price, some women think, <laughs> Then she starts walking, and she's all looking like what? Snow White. <laughs> huh? Oh, Rapunzel. Oh, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, Cinderella. Golden Shoe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those are not the things. If a man is lasting, those are the things he'll see. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those are the things. That's why, you know, <laughs> one time a child asked me, something, but Apostle, why is it that some men marry women and just look and say, eh, what was he thinking? <laughs> Who has ever asked themselves that question? Put up, don't fear. <laughs> you look at a man, his heart, he's not even hot, but he had his heart. Then another woman comes through, she's all walking like, she didn't want to know. I'm not saying, don't, hey, again, again, let me even correct that. Some of you might think I'm saying, don't bathe, don't wear makeup. No, we like it too, please. We like our wives to be what? Smart, please. But that's not the total sum. Yes, but there are still those ones who try to be smart and they are still what? Then you're like, but this guy, look at how old he is. Some of you even comment with your cheap talk, Kala, I can't believe. Kala, I feel sorry. <laughs> Man of God. <laughs> this one has refused. <laughs> why don't you first shut up? <laughs> first shut up. You're not, listen, why? Some women need to shut up. How do you start judging another woman because they've not chosen you? Please. Praise. Yes, she might be out of shape. Now that she has value. She might be older than you, has a bigger nose than you, bigger eyes than you, funny hair. Yes, but she has a what? A price. Then you display your cheapness by disqualifying her price. It means you don't even know price. No, by the time a woman of prayer, let me tell you, let me now say it very clearly, women attending equipped. When a funny woman looks funny and a man makes a decision to marry her, shut up. If your wife study her, there is something to learn. There is always something to learn. The only problem is you thought that no good can come out of Nazareth because your eyes are physical. Nazareth is a spiritual experience and God loves such things. He loves to appear in the least expected places. I don't know why. He loves to appear in the least expected what? Places. Do you find it a rugged woman? Then that she here. Value up there. Then you find these ones who were all lied to since they were growing up. You're beautiful, you're beautiful. Until she's so confused. Until she's so convinced that she's so beautiful. And she stops to work on that woman inside. Because every time they are proving this woman outside. Until she is too convinced that one time I was in university. We had a girl. Ah, yeah. She used to, eh. Yeah, even me I used to see and say, mm -mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? In the flesh. This girl, eh? <laughs> I will not describe. Because if I use a cartoon character, you might think I'm abusing. But she looked like a certain cartoon character, you know. In one of those DreamWork movies. Eh? You know the DreamWorks? <laughs> she was all... Eh. Then there was a cute girl I remember who was with in campus. This cute girl said, Oh, you're movie burunji. Let me translate it. That girl is so ugly in a good way. As in, she's so well ugly. It's the word exists. And indeed, if you looked at this girl, eh, you'd say, <laughs> Campus, 2007. 2017. That very girl, she's married with children. And on a hot fellow, this hot Beyonce, 
It's still on the store. Advertising her wares. Because she is not the price they are willing to buy. <laughs> Up to now, she's still on the store. On a price they are not willing to what? The other lady is married with children. Oh, I have seen it with my very own eyes. And I said, my goodness. I think we are missing something. This is the thing I've been wanting to say, but I didn't have words for. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tap that woman and tell her price. Praise God. That is what separates virtuous wife. This wife. 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 Praise God. Now, so the issue is, yes, your outward adornment is there. But even the fact that this woman could not see the wife in this girl because she assumed she was too ugly to get married, that is exactly what can't make her a wife. Or will draw her price to be a wife to someone of her price. Because everyone attracts their own kind. Don't be deceived. I tell people, if you have to take time to marry, take it. Listen, women, and let me be honest. Even if it takes 20 years, if you know your price, wait. The person of your price will come. But on our Kubienga, Romanyu, Atiwagamo Sumo Saga, skin at Andy Sokwesika. I know some of you, your skin has stopped to fit you, but it's okay. Praise God. Price. 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 Men, for our day, we shall have vision. <laughs> I'll have us there because eh, also we men also we are funny. You don't have a vision. You don't look like you have a vision. You're not going anywhere and you're telling a woman, I want to marry you. <laughs> also you women, ask some questions. Where are you going? Say, Tell me your 10 years to come. Seriously, no. Don't just put your hand there. Oh, I love you. Then you get lost in the moment. After eating cookies for two weeks, you go back to us actually now. Eh? Seriously now. Eh? Uh -huh. How are we going to get married to educate our first child? God will provide. Oh yes, I know God will provide. But he gives us wisdom too. Uh -huh. Where is the wisdom? God will provide. I know, I know. Yet. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, let's finish this. He says, her price. No, 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 let's go back to, to Peter. Now, do you see that you always read this thing, but tonight it has opened your eyes to something else? Yet you say, I know that scripture. You see, next verse. And next verse says, let it be the hidden man. Now I'm drawing the price of the heart in that which is not corruptible mama 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 do you know why in proverbs it says she shall do him good all the days of his life she shall do him good she shall do him good she shall do him good her husband's heart that safely trust in her safely safely her husband's heart that safely trust safely you know, as I don't care how much I mess you up, I am sure you can't mess me up. Now, is that fair? Ah, Apostle, is that fair? You think you're going to start messing me up, and then me, I just keep quiet. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. You're in the wrong building. We invited equipped wives, not women. Go home. You mean he will do? No, see, since when did you start living on his doing? You do your part. You do your part. I knew women who married men who had children outside. And they got these children in. Not that it's right. But she can't. He has to trust her. He says, no, they are my children. All of them are my children. All of them are my children. Then you find another woman. This one is of the other wife. These two are mine. Then even this one is of the other. Digito.com. There are people who are living in the world. They 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 are You understand? the world. They are living in the world. They are living in the world. I don't know why he, he said that her husband's heart that safely. Because God knew by the wiring he has put in your spirit, that man will need that trust. 
I can tell you, men know. When you have a woman who trusts you, it's too hard to betray her. Support me on that. It is too hard for a man to betray a woman who he knows trusts him. I don't know why. Because trust again makes him king. You see, we feed on that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let him make mistakes. Support and what? Understand him. Hey, okay, he has made mistakes. Okay. You have I know that he did is wrong. And you say, Nyanange, now, if it fits you, my king. Yeah, I feel this is not a good idea, but if you say you're going to invest in this, me, I'm with you, I'm your wife. He makes a mistake. Oh, sorry. We shall go through this. Let him trust you to tell you his weaknesses. Let him get to a level and know that I messed up today, but, but if I go and tell her, she will say, yeah, I understand. I understand you made the mistake. You see, I told you, but it's okay, don't worry. We shall go through it. Me, I'm helper suitable, I'm here. Whether you're going through this or not, I am your helper suitable. Trust me, me, I'm here. Run here when everything is funny. You come here. When he comes to the house, ah, did I tell that stupid man he goes away? Then he finds Shanita. Then Shanita says, oh, come, baby. Come. Oh. Why? Because the day you start quarreling, the day he starts to feel that the rooftop is more comfortable, a new house. He can't trust you. And the Bible says that a man would rather sleep on what? On a rooftop than sleep in the house of the woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then he says, starts to put his bed up there. That's why I told people, if you read Proverbs, you realize the Bible is clear. Strange women have a very, very powerful sense of men on the rooftop. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They know how to smell a man who is not happy. I don't know how. I think it's like first nature. Strange women. Proverbs talks of strange women. Mama, if she not women, let me tell you. All women know a married man who is not happy. I don't know why. Strange women, they do. It's also in their price. <laughs> to know. You understand? Then she studies. She talks, hi, how are you? What? The man speaks for 15 seconds and she already knows what the other woman is not doing right. The only difference is, for her she's not doing it because it's her price to do it as a wife. For her she's doing it, she's taking advantage. She's desperate. Then again the wisdom to know the difference between the things I am doing because that is who I am versus the things that I'm doing because I'm desperate. Because both of you are doing the same stuff but one of you is true. And the other one is phony. You're fake. You're acting what someone is doing naturally. And then you act for so long until you can't act anymore. That's why men say she changed. No, she didn't change. She was the same woman. She just needed phenomena to pick her off. She is as good as she is as long as everything is okay. Snap her. She will do stuff to you. And then you will open up your eyes and realize, oh, oh she was always this woman. She only hid behind it. Because a woman who was naturally it, if I had snapped her, she would still have stayed a wife. <laughs> Praise God. And that's how things test. Situations come. And God tells you, you have to win even this one. Why? Because you didn't get married to come out of it. You got married to stay. When you enter marriage... When you say you're entering, even if I don't agree with the chimani you're marrying, when you enter there, don't ever come and tell me I'm divorcing. Wow! Stick there. God will help you from there. <laughs> Praise God. Ah, me, I can't officiate divorce. No! But I won't, unless you just go beyond, obviously, because there are people you can warn and know this one is going to knock, but they refuse to what? So if you knock and say, Apostle, you told me, I'll still tell you, go what? back because you still made the decision to what to get married yeah, some people think marriage is two years marriage is not two years but now it's forever read that word bold it italicize it underline it and make it in bigger format such that you understand that forever is not two years you understand yes me i just I was looking at my mother some time back i remember the pictures of her when she was a child now she's a model she had a very snap body now she's tying a belt here I'm like, <laughs> One time I told her, man, why are you trying to... Ah, yeah, she almost killed me. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Why are you trying to get married? Why are you trying to get married? Why 
she drew her price there. You understand? But that time where even the belt will start going up and you still love her. Now she's your wife. It continues going up. Now she's still your what? It continues to go up until the belt goes. You understand? Then they start putting on dresses without belts. And she's still your what? Your wife. Price. Tell your neighbor price. 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 My challenge is that we are raising a generation of women who know nothing about price. And we are having a generation of men who are marrying also on superficial definitions of wives. And then they get into marriage and they've never seen a price on a woman. Neither have they ever understood what it makes to be a wife. So yes, the guy who is marrying there in no price, neither vision. And the woman who is also getting married has no price either way. But they love each other either way. So any time the relationship can fluctuate, it's volatile. Because every time he looks out, he gets another definition of price. Yeah, I tell women, What I'm trying to say, no man is so good. And a man Yetaga mukazi mukakam certain kind of woman gore mo musajja your man fails go bere omuzibu you are the difficult ara tukira bane mu bible even in the bible is there omchalo no vasti vasti yale mo musajja she fails the man omusajja yomu yes it's the same man e yafumbirwa esta who gets married to esta tokaye yamusobola and yet she manages kubanga ye yamuyiga because she understood wetaga kuyiga musajja wo must understand the demand <laughs> now what is it this it's not him do your part price get to a point where you know yourself you must know your price it kills your insecurity You've had his cheated, you know, no, he's going to come back. Why? Because no woman can be as hot as I am. He's joking. He'll come back. Why? Because I know my price very well. I have weighed myself. Already a strange woman has a price. And he will look at strange and you and say, no, this one is strange. Now, so you've also gotten to the level of fighting a strange woman. I refuse. That woman who is coming between me and my husband. You are now also at the level of a strange woman. You're fighting at the level of a strange woman. You don't know who you are. Sarah tells Hagar, leave. Abraham says no. God comes and tells Abraham, hey, 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 this woman knows who she is. Pack the slave tomorrow and get her going. Don't mess up Sarah. Don't, don't mess up a woman who knows who she is. Even when Hagar becomes funny, she has her reasons to rebel against Sarah. But God still tells Hagar, Go back to your mistress, Sarah, and do what she tells you. Why? Because Sarah knows who she is. She can't refuse a strange woman. And then you think that you can never have peace with her. No. That's why I tell women, firstly, does your husband hear God? Because if you're entering a relationship with a guy who doesn't hear God, you're in trouble. You'll tell him to get rid of Hagar, and then they get rid of you. But when a man hears God, you know you're marrying a man of God, you don't need to worry. That's why I tell people, when a woman knows her price, you don't worry when you see a strange text message. You look at it and laugh and say she can never be this hot. They are playing, they have small games. It will die. And it will die in the middle. Because your heart does safely trust in him. You're the one who makes him. If you think your husband cheats, he will cheat. Surely. If you don't think you trust your husband, surely you've opened the door to cheating on you. He told you, this is the Bible. No woman trusts her husband and can fail. No woman. 
you must trust that he didn't cheat. Even if you find a what? A text message and a piece of paper in it. You close your eyes and say, Mary Lynn. I'm more beautiful than you, you're joking. On a guy in a musiba. Namute kamuchupa. Masha rabakosa. Masha ketele. Even when you're praying for yourself as a wife, don't spend time with Hagar. Oh, I cut her. God, separate her. No. Take time to speak who you are. I am anointed. I'm the best there is. I am beautiful. The perfection of beauty in Zion. I am his flower, his love bud, his chicky and chocolate. I'm everything he dreams of. Right now he's thinking about me. I've messed up his head, but don't do it on a single man. He's not your husband. That's witchcraft. So, instead of you wasting time on, on Hagar, finish your time on you. Build inward beauty. Incorruptible. Where does corruption begin? Corruption begins by speech. Your confession. Confess the best things about yourself. If you, you heard what Michelle Obama said. One time Obama, after finishing office, close to the finish, he told Michelle, I wonder if I had married another woman and I'm president. No. Michelle told him, no, no, no. You'd not be president. Oh, where did you get the mix? You'd not be what? Meaning I made you, brother. I made you. That's why they say behind every successful man. Bambi, let's say wife. Please, respect the place of wives. Wife. Let's not use the word woman. The world has taught us it's woman. No, wife. Praise God. Incorruptible. Even when you sit around women who speak cheap talk, don't sit there. You understand what I'm saying? When you're a married woman, become friends with married women. I see many married women so close with single girls. And I wonder, what kind of conversations are you having if you're not pouring into her marriage? You're hanging out with your girlfriends who are not all married. One time I found a group of girls. You know how girls make their groups? They even give themselves names. Smanya what girls. I found them sometime, one time in a restaurant. And then the girl told me, this is our girl group. I asked her, is any of them married? She told me, no, all of them are single. And she was the only married woman. And she was undergoing a divorce. And I told her, the first thing, if you want your marriage to heal, leave that club. Let single girls have conversations of women. Look for wives. And listen to wife conversations. The anointing will stir him back. Because being a wife is an anointing. That's why women look so hot when they're proposed to. Yeah, she looks funny. The day they put her on that pulpit, that's why you say, oh, wait, wait, wait. Mm -mm. Kumbe. Because something has, it's a covering. There's something. There's something on a woman who's about to get married. You sense it. It's a glory. Praise God. That's why we cling. That's why we clean because we've seen a price you remember the man who has found a treasure in a field you remember the parable he saw a treasure in the field what did he do he went back sold everything and bought the field because he needed the treasure we well, needed the treasure hallelujah he needed the treasure he needed, he needed the treasure. He sells everything. That's why I told women, once you understand this, eh, your man will be like remote control. You'll be pressing. You'll be tuning any channel. If you want Mnet movies, if you want them in HD, if you want Discovery Channel, National Geographic, anything you want, super sport, he'll be like an Explorer HD. Premium. Hallelujah. Let me speak to every woman in the sound of this voice in this room. If you aspire to get married or are married, I want to decree upon your life that you will never fail. Tonight the words that I've spoken have drawn and defined a great price beyond words that can ever be spoken. Your husband will never look at you and look at another man. That be far from you. 
no woman will ever be compared to you in the name of Jesus because he beholds your chest conversation coupled with fear and that hidden man in the heart out of the incorruptible I wish I had time to say more on that that gentle and meek spirit and the Bible says which in the eyes of God is a great price you have a price on you you have a price on you daughter of Zion you have a price on you I decree that you're not going to sell yourself short you're not going to compromise yourself of lower rank you're not even going to be corruptible at all that you'll not be corrupted in gossip that you'll not be corrupted in cheap talk slander oh funny women fables you're not going to be involved in things that corrupt your spirit you're not going to speak words that corrupt you you're not going to submit yourself to the level of strange women you will never be strange and you will never be compared to a strange woman your husband will always know your price in the name of Jesus your husband will always know how much you are he will look at you and trust you he will trust your spirit you will do him good all the days it doesn't mean he's going to be a perfect man but you will do him good he might be funny but do him good that's what makes you a wife you do your part you see how God will do his part Abraham was not willing to let go of Hagar he loved Ishmael he was his son but there was a relationship Sarah had with God the price on her life could not weigh her against Hagar Hagar had to pack because she had a price God will sort that man if you settle in your place I pray for you that you find your place in the name of Jesus I pray for you that where there is wounds that you heal in the name of Jesus. I pray that where there is big frustrations in your life, tonight the price that God reminds you of stirs up something so beautiful and that thing is going to sort everything outside. Your husband will look at you and will never look at another woman. He will lust for you only and never lust for another woman. He will hunger and cleave to you and never hunger and cleave to another woman. In the name of Jesus, if there's a woman in this room and you've been having a situation where your husband has been whoring with other women, tonight it ends. I decree and I declare tonight it ends. Somebody tonight walks out with a grace. Some of you are going to settle in marriage very soon because this was the only missing ingredient to settle you. Men are going to come and flood over you. And men of great price in the name of Jesus because you'll attract your kind you cannot fail in Jesus name parents are raising girls who are raising daughters I declare and I declare that you'll teach your daughters to be of great price I declare and I declare in the name of Jesus that your daughters are not going to be so cheap they're not going to get pregnant before marriage they're not going to sell their bodies cheaply in the name of Jesus you're going to raise God fearing children they will know who they are in the name of Jesus and they'll attract their own kind you will not need to go through families to confirm who is who, no. God will confirm all those details because you have planted in your child what they have to be planted. We decree and we declare that we are defining and redefining marriage to the world. We are going to prove to them that there is a church that leaves, breeds family. We decree and we declare that in our days, our sons are going to have vision and our daughters are going to have price. Oh, great price. We decree and we declare that every man and woman in this room who aspires to marry or is married, I decree upon your life, or has children who will marry, I decree upon your life in the name of Jesus that we are going to set the example. That our children will look at us and love to get married. That our grandchildren will look at our marriages and admire to get married. They'll look at our relationships and desire to be where we are. That we shall be the happiest people in marriage. That we shall have the most successful marriages. That whatever comes, God, you'll give us the grace to play our part. Because it's not my responsibility to change her. It's not my responsibility to change him. It's your responsibility. You only called me to play my part. I pray for every woman, married woman in this room, also aspiring to marry. That should be your part. Can you give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise? Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap like something has happened in your life. Clap like something has happened in your life. 
something has happened in your daughter's life. Clap like something has happened in your personal life. Clap like something has happened. Price. Price. Great price. Great price. Great price. Somebody say, I'm of great price. Say, I'm of great price. If you're a man, don't repeat that. You say, I have a vision. Somebody say, I'm of great price. Say, I'm of great price. Men say, I have a vision. In the name of Jesus. Wow. The entrance of his word brings light. And it gives us understanding to the same. I have a feeling that marriages are going to increase now. You know, in Panera, almost every month we have three to four couples. Now I'm worried. Praise God. Woman of God, that's if you have a big job. Equipped wives is going to increase because women are going to get married. <laughs> Praise God. You know, when you're delivered of desperacy, when you understand your price, you'll never be desperate again. I, I know some women say, ah, Apostle, I'm not married because they've not said anything. No, 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 woman. That's cheap to say. We want to get to a point where women say, I'm not married because I've not decided. When I do, my price. Women, help me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, you're the one who says, mm -mm, I'm not married because I don't want to. Never say again, if you've been in this conference, that I'm not married because nobody has told me. Or no man has talked to me. Never say that nonsense again. We differ from today. Say I'm not married because I've not chosen yet. When I choose, I will. Position your place where you're too expensive to be ignored. You're the one who chooses when to marry. It is possible in the name of Jesus. Let me prove it also by experience and revelation. You know scientists, researchers, and all these people of the world have proved that some of the most successful marriages in the world are in India. Did you know why? Because the women choose to marry, so they know their price. They're the ones who even buy men. You didn't get it, did you? The women in India are the ones who buy men. They are the ones who pay the bride price. Men don't pay bride price, no. Do you understand what I'm saying? They were raised in their culture to know you're so rich, and you're the one who chooses when to marry. <laughs> Somebody some of great praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose 4 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.